Welcome, guys, to the Cup of Nurses podcast with your hosts, Peter Fendera and myself, Matt Solarczyk. This is a podcast where we tackle current health news and hot nursing topics one conversation at a time. If you find any value in this podcast, please review, follow, share. We are trying to grow this podcast, and you wouldn't believe how much it helps us if you smash the five stars, leave a comment. It gets us ranked, more people discover us, and it keeps motivating us to keep producing this high-quality content. If you are on YouTube, you guys have a special view. We're in San Diego right now. We're recording a podcast outside. I think it looks, looks dope. There might be some aircraft or some noise in the background, so forgive us in the future. How are we doing today, Pete? I'm doing great. This is our first episode outside, right? Legit recording outside. We got some sunglasses. Mm, so it should be pretty interesting. But this episode, guys, today we are going to talk about getting outside your comfort zone and our travel nursing experience with True Staff in these past two months. Very minimal negative stuff to say about our travel nursing experience, I would say. It's been all positive. It's been, it's been great. It's been a giant change. Um, if there is any negative, most of the negatives have been just with us accommodating for like recording, accommodating like each other for the most part. Nothing really has been an issue with our contract for the most part, but a few scheduling issues. Yeah, I feel like we're very unique travel nurses because we have a business on the side to run. And that's like what the, what the hardest part is, is talking to whoever makes a schedule and telling them, hey, we need a somewhat similar schedule. We don't mind having a day or two that we know we don't have the same shift, but it makes it convenient because we have to vlog full time. We have to record these episodes. And if we have opposite schedules at work, that only adds to the problem. So that that's like our biggest hurdle, I would say, as travel nurses. Yeah, and the issue isn't isn't with true staff or anybody. It's nothing that we could control either, because like Matt said, we don't make our schedule, so it's the scheduling people that make our schedule in the hospital. Yeah. And that, you know, we really have no control over. We could tell them our concerns, we could tell them what we need, but you know, they gotta fill staffing where they gotta fill staffing. So those that maybe don't listen to us and are wondering who is travel nursing for, I will tell you exactly that. Travel nursing is a great way to advance your career and earn extra money all while traveling the country, right? So patient care across U.S. won't change much as a travel nurse, but your location will. And if you're somebody that's chasing experience in life and have a lust for life, this is the career for you. And we're going to tell you guys in this episode, just like Peter said, our two months wrap up. I think I think it's been amazing, like just being in, in the Midwest and coming to the West Coast and being here for two months. I feel like I've done more in two months than maybe I've done in one year on the, in the Midwest. Yeah, so we've been traveling with True Staff this contract. Matt worked them worked with them in the past, and we actually recently renewed our contract for for a few more months. But I want to give a quick shout out to our True Staff recruiter, Kendall. He's, he's always on point, and we talked. A little bit about communication in our prior podcast regarding like travel nursing in, in general. When we summarize it for you guys, like the positives, benefits, the myths, and all that jazz. But c- communication has really been been the key with True Staff, just because we're not only working as staff nurses, right? Or yeah. sorry, we're not only working as travel nurses in in the hospital filling staff nurse nurse roles and jobs. Things that we do a lot of stuff outside of work, so we need a lot of op- accommodation for that because our turnover turnover time for our activities and our travels is literally like three to seven days. We don't plan months at a time because we don't we don't really have that kind of um, a leeway, right? Yeah. So a lot of the issues that that we come up are things that we need we need changed, and we communicate with Kendall from True Staff. He gets it done right away. Like we we need a high we need a quick turnover. So if we ask Kendall a question, we need a response back within 24 hours, ideally. Otherwise, we can't plan our trips. Otherwise, we can't do certain things. And Kendall has literally been on top of it. You know, he's really interested in what, what we're doing. He keeps in touch with us not only like with our work life, but also with our like life work balance you can Hell say yeah. he tunes into us he checks out our vlogs checks out our podcast so it's not only a business relationship that we have with our recruiter kendo from true staff we also have like more of a personal basis and that makes things a lot easier because it's a lot easier to to kind of bridge a gap or to find a nice median with somebody that you can personalize with but also have a business conversation with definitely right? definitely because recruiters are essentially salesmen right and you don't want that feel that somebody is selling you something, a.k.a. a three-month commitment to a hospital in a different state, and then they just kind of go about their ways. Mm. You don't want that feel in a relationship. And, you know, this recruiter specifically and this company, I feel like they, yeah, they check up on our, on our adventures, activities, and it builds a relationship. And I think that's what's most important because your recruiter is that middleman. Mm. And you want somebody that's reliant. This, this guy is very straightforward. Communication is on point just like any other relationship. Communication is key. And that makes all the differences for us. And that's why we love this company for that reason. Yeah, all these agencies, as soon as you sign that dotted line with your name committing to this three-month travel nursing job, 
that's kind of where a relationship almost ends. Then you really won't hear from them until something happens or you got to complete something or your contract needs to be renewed. Here it's, here's different. Like, we know we signed a contract that we are committed to this three-month contract with this hospital, but it's almost like a a contract of, like, almost like I want to, I wanna, you can say, like, friendship, you know, because, like, the way that Kendall, how far Kendall goes for us sometimes and how True Staff does things, like, they're, it's not just... It's not just like, hey, we're making money off Matt and Peter, and we'll hit them back up once the contract ends for some more money. It's just like, it's like nice synergy. Like we communicate almost every week, and we keep people keep each other up to date. It's really, it's a really wonderful relationship that we have yeah. so far. And, and we get accommodated. For example, our contract ends in January, and we're going to renew again. So normally we just continue working. You get your contract's extended, and little you know low key perk of travel nursing is you get to take. If you're gonna re-sign for three months, you could take a break. So we're planning on taking a whole week off to ourselves, no work, focusing on other things. Unfortunately, the schedule at work is already out. They are already short, uh, short-staffed. There's people that are not coming in to, to work. They're quarantined for 10 days. So we're, we're willing to work those extra two weeks and then have a random week off in January. And we asked the manager because that's just professional and they actually allowed it to happen. Mm. So it's all about communication with anything and any job. And you know what I mean? As long as you have that synergy of putting goodness into the world, I feel like you get it back and everything kind of works itself out in a way. What's nice is that Matt and I haven't really even thought about taking like a week or two off our contract, like a break in between. But Ken actually brought it to our attention. He's like, hey, you guys are renewing. Do you want to take like a week or two off? And we're like, yeah, maybe we should just take a week or two off. Yeah, and that's what's so cool about it. So some hidden benefits of travel nursing. I feel like in this episode, we, we talk a lot about travel nursing. So we're going to have like a different spin to it. It's all going to be more about mindset and the things that maybe you won't be really thinking about travel nursing that will bring to your attention. And one of them is that it broadens your perspective, correct? And having this ability to travel, whether it's nursing or just traveling in general, it really pushes you outside your comfort zone. And we hear a lot about comfort zone, what it is. And you might not even realize that you're stuck living in a bubble. If you grew up in the same city doing the same thing or maybe going to the same high school and college like your parents, whatever it might be, how do you know how you are as a person if you you never go out there and explore new things, new experiences? And I think that's like the biggest takeaway with like what we're learning as travel nurses is you, you take away yourself from this bubble. You're able to break these negative cycles. You, you might be able to realize things that you do in your routine that you don't like. And you're able to ditch this old self in a way and you're able to like regrow just like a butterfly in a you know i don't know emerging from a uh, cocoon you're able to like give yourself a rebirth in a way if you think about it that way and it's interesting to to look back at our life because we literally grew up in a bubble right yeah. we're, we're polish uh, we grew up in a polish community all our friends are, are polish and that's basically we were we were basically in this bubble of like we basically polish people and polish culture and polish living and we did break away you know we're not saying you guys are in like a a, a culture bubble like we were but we were definitely in like a culture bubble and then out of our like all of our peers we're doing a lot more different stuff than than everybody else that we kind of grew up with right and everyone else that we kind of grew up with they're doing very similar things with each other you know what i'm saying like everybody's you, getting married by the way yeah, everyone's <laughs> getting married that that too dude but they're doing like their own thing they're like regular polish way of thinking of like nine to five and that's it monday through friday that's how I'm going to be for the rest of my life, married to kids, and that's how I'm going to live happily, yeah. ever, happily ever after. We're kind of living out of the box. You know, we decided to do travel nursing, which was basically I mean, unheard of. Things like yeah. that. And, and the fact that we even became nurses as, as men is something that you don't really, really see that much of. So we kind of broke away from not only like a cultural perspective, but also like a social economic perspective. Yeah, it, it helps you question all your norms of everyday life, mm-hmm. whether it's home, work, or metacognitively, right? It potentially inspires you to keep making change. Mm-hmm. And that definition of metacognitively, like, I really didn't know what it means, and I looked into it. So with broadening your perspective and traveling or exploring, you're able to kind of assess yourself. You're able to assess your understanding, your performance. You're able to kind of see your critical thinking, your awareness, your ability to learn what kind of thinker and learner you are. Like, it really takes you outside of your shoes. You know, like people say, mindfulness is that way of just taking yourself in that third picture, third their being like that like being a bird and just looking down on earth this is kind of what like exploring and developing new perspectives is exactly and point number two is uh, we talk about a lot English nursing knowledge so I want to give you guys like an example uh, let's say like you work in a new ICU and you've worked in ICU before and you know how you have your own protocols own way of doing things like you've been doing X Y and Z for 
every other patient that comes in. You know, you have this routine and you know what to do for every situation. But let's just say you got a new cardiologist now and you're used to starting Levo on all your patients in your prior ICU. And then this cardiologist wants you to start Neo instead of Levo. And you're like, why, why are we using Neo? Levo is more concentrated, it's more, more effective for, for blood pressure. It's, it's more common to be used because a lot of times people don't really use Neo because they want to go into the most effective medication first just to kind of um, get rid of the middleman, right? And Levo is basically our strongest one. We don't really use Epi that often but Levo is usually where we go to. And then this cardiologist explains that since we're gonna use Neo, we don't wanna use Levo because this patient is tacky to begin with. He's gonna have some tachyarrhythmias. Because you know, one of the side effects of, of Neo is you can have rebound bradycardia technically, right? So it doesn't increase your heart rate as much as Levo, right? So in this, this, per, this situation, the cardiologist knows a little bit more, more than you in this circumstance, so that's why he gave Neo is because the, car, the patient is already tacky and he's maybe having a little runs of VTAC and he's being aggravated by his Levo, so this is why the physician puts on Neo instead. And you're just like, oh shit, that, that makes sense. We never really used Neo in our prior hospital. Yeah. This is kind of where nurse knowledge kind, kind of um, gets broadened because next time, you guess what, you have a patient and he's really tacky and he's hypotensive and you give Levo and it makes him more tacky, but you're fixing the hypotension, but you're making it more tacky, maybe you could switch to Neo instead. And that might bring his blood pressure up and it might not make him as tacky. Cause that's how, yeah. cause people react differently to these pressures sometimes, you know, and that's kind of like where your knowledge gets broader and you're just like, oh shit, it kind of makes you a better nurse. And you could tell that somebody else, like I'd say somebody else having a tacky patient that's hypotensive, you'd be like, maybe, maybe you should try some, some Neo instead of Levo. And you'd be like, okay. And then it kind of gets passed around. And, and I think that's so like, just like you say, nursing knowledge, it, because you've learned these little things in different hospitals, let's just say you go back to your staff job, you go to a different contract, like now you're able to kind of chime in and give an opinion to a doctor and, and people respect you for that. Mm. Because you have so much knowledge or different way of doing things, because usually you're in one hospital, there's a set of protocols, there's a set of, there's kind of one way of doing things in a way, right? It's a process and you being a different person, shining a different perspective, different knowledge, like they can be like, damn, this nurse knows what they're talking about. Mm. It could be either your example, right? Hey, why don't we get Neo? So you questioning a doctor, it gives you respect, man. It's like, yeah, I really do know my shit in a way. Mm. And that could be with like, hey, like, let's do some Tordar. Or, hey, like, you're not but slow. Let's, let's do a bolus. Like sometimes when you ask for things to a doctor, they, they'll, it's going to help them kind of, you know, expand their knowledge too. Like, oh, wow, this nurse kind of, you know, they have a good point. Let's do some albumin or something. So it's you can never go wrong with this experience. Right. It, it builds respect. Like Matt said with the, the physicians, like if a, you ask somebody for a physician, like start a press or, or whatever, like as a travel nurse, you don't know the intensivist, intensivist or the cardiologist or anybody in the medical treatment team, right? You don't, you're, you're new and they don't know you, you don't know them, right? So how do you, you know, build a relationship? If you show your knowledge, it's gonna have them trust you more and be like, okay, Peter has this critically ill patient. Um, you know, it, he's a travel nurse, he's, he's new here, but I'm okay with it because he gave me some good recommendations before and I kind of already assessed his, his nursing skills and you kind of see when a patient deteriorates quickly. So, I'm, so this would be a good night compared to a physician having a nurse take care of a patient that the physician doesn't really know too much about that nurse and is always checking up on that, that patient. Yep. You know, it kind of makes the, the intensivist or the MD's day or night a little bit easier when you know what you're doing or at least when you sound like you know what you're doing, you know. And the same with these like protocols and stuff, like insulin protocols. Like I've dealt with one insulin protocol my whole nursing career, and then I come to this hospital and it's a different insulin protocol. You obviously still go on blood sugars, but the way you titrate is, is different, which yeah. is very, very interesting. Like for example, yeah, same thing here. Like I had a glucomander, correct? So every single time we had a blood sugar, we basically typed it into this program, and it was spit spitballing out a number. You programmed the number, and we had like alarms around the unit if your blood sugar is ready. Everybody knows your blood sugar is ready. You better go check it. Like here, they have like this graph, correct? Amount of un units, and then you go up and down on the row to give you how much insulin you're giving an hour or units an hour based on the protocol. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. And same with like their blood sugar. Like, or when you give insulin, they have like an AM dose and a PM dose. Yeah. Not all hospitals have that. Hospitals just have that, just like one strict sliding scale dose. But these are people actually have a sliding dose for, for days and a sliding dose for nights, which is out. It's just very interesting, and I wouldn't mind seeing like the research on, on which one's better. And yeah. you can kind of kind of compare, like if you're having one hospital where you have people with, with sugars and are always like hypoglycemic and trying to figure out why is everybody always why is the hypoglycemic so common here? You kind of look at their protocol, and then come look at some someone else's protocol and kind of compare. Like this hospital has different protocol, and they don't see as much hypoglycemia. Yeah, it's just like um, a lot of like a lot of hospitals uh, do heparin, 
and they check a lab value, PTT, correct? Mm -hmm. Remember we went to Oakland, they did um, the anti-XA inhibitors? Mm -hmm. Kind of cool how that works. So it's just, just a different process of the clotting uh, cascade. cascade, and it's just actually uh, more efficient. So, And the third thing about benefit of travel nursing is that it boosts confidence and self-esteem. And a lot of people don't see it like that. But travel nursing is a great tool to boost confidence in yourself, or maybe if you feel like you have low self-esteem, this will really get you out of your feet. You're gonna have no choice because even the whole, like perfect example, like the way me and you transitioned from Chicago to uh, LA, correct? Like we, we, are, we had all these theories, we had all this plan how things are gonna go down, but you just never know what's going to happen until you get behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. Just like our cars were delayed for a day, what are we gonna do? We had to get in freaking, um, what did we get? We get a tour? Did we get a tour? Did we get a for, rental car? For one day we got a rental car. Yeah, so we had to get a rental car because we couldn't get to work on time, cars were delayed, and it is what it is. We just, you continue navigating through the process. You solve on the go, and that forces you to learn and navigate the world in a whole another way. Mm -hmm. Now that you had this opportunity of leaving your comfort zone, geez, you're confident. You could walk around like you're, I don't wanna say your shit doesn't stink, but you, you have the self-esteem that you could tackle a lot of different tasks in the world mm -hmm. because you just went through so much. And even being like a normal, like not a normal nurse, but being being like a nurse, like your confidence is already elevated by the career you chose, right? Like there's not many careers out there that deal with human lives, right? So if you're a confident nurse, that's something you can transition to like you're outside of hospital living or outside of facility living. Because if you could save a life, then like what's, what else is kind of stopping you, right? You already kind of yeah. know how to save a life. You, can, you know how to maintain emergencies. Yeah, you're not gonna have pressures at like, within arm's reach when you're out in public, but the fact that you know what you're capable of in a hospital, that's gonna show what you're capable of in the outside. Hell yeah, I think nursing did help me gain more confidence. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, we deal with freaking death and dying and saving lives 12 hours a day on our shift. Like what's, what's some little task that your car breaks on your tires flat or mm -hmm. something's wrong? Like those are, <coughs> excuse me, materialistic items. They could be replaced, yeah. but a human body can and that just, that just changes the world for us, you know? And this goes beautifully into our next topic, which is your comfort zone and building confidence. So as nurses, especially us ICU nurses, we're pretty control freaks. You know, we want blood pressure in certain parameters, we want your output in certain parameters, you want your cardiac index in a certain parameter, your respirations, you want your breathing, your tidal volumes, all that. We want everything to be going according to plan. We don't want the deviation from the norm. Yeah. And that kind of is an issue in other things, right? Because a lot of us don't know how to learn to let go. We when things stray away from the path or from a routine, you know, we, some of us tend to almost die, right? We don't know what to do, we get freaked out, we get anxiety, we're basically almost afraid of, of change, afraid of going yes. out of our comfort zone. So the, the first thing in building confidence and getting out of your comfort zone is, is letting go of control. So being okay when shit doesn't go your way. And you know, as much as we love control in, in the ICU, it also feels good looking back in the, in the present, in that moment in time, it sucks. Like, let's say your patient deteriorating quickly and you're completely in control of the situation. Your blood pressure's out of whack, your heart rate's going, going nuts, patient's breathing, tachycardic, tachypnic, all that. That's just straight chaos. Yeah. You know, straight chaos. But you kind of learn to get past that. And by you learning to get past that, you kind of realize when you go home and it sheds the fan and things aren't going good, you're just like, well, you know, yeah, I dropped this box of eggs now, 12 eggs are shattered. But, you know, I was able to almost save a patient's life or I was able to deal with a patient almost dying or, or, or coding. So this really isn't a big of a deal. Yeah. You don't think about it that way, but subconsciously, like your mind alters that way where, yeah, it sucks. You broke 12 eggs, but hey, you know, while it sucks, being that patient is almost fucking dying. So it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah, nursing humbles you in general, man, yeah. which, which is beautiful about that. And if you look at like letting go, if you think about it, like in this whole comfort zone bubble, anything that's different from a regular routine, there's fear on the other side. Any, any decision you want to do in life, any goal that you have, you have two options, correct? Do the thing or don't do the thing. And the reason why you don't do the thing is because we avoid fear instead, in, instead of going into it, correct? Mm. It's just like a phobia, anxiety. And I'm generalizing here. I'm not a freaking um, psychologist or anything, so don't quote me on this one as we say, right? So like, you know, anxiety, uh, phobias, anything like that, your comfort zone, you have to go go into it, correct? You can't, every single time you have this fear of something and you go around it, you're beating around the bush, you're, you still have fear. Mm. It's not gonna go away until 
you go tackle whatever that fear is. You have to go through the process. And that's what a lot of people say, even uh, with coping, correct? You can't beat around the bush and put a Band-Aid and forget about it or get super drunk, get super high, take some drugs. Like you have to go through that emotion. You have to go feel that pain. Go, go feel how that feels. And that's what letting go is, just understanding that, hey, just because I don't know how things are going to be, spontaneous action, exploring and going through the flow, you will learn something. So the life lesson is this, that not everything is planned. Just predict and be prepared for it and just kind of go through it on the go. And letting go is one of those first steps of getting outside of that comfort zone. And a good little example, what happened to us recently is our whole skydiving thing. We really wanted to go skydiving on a certain day and we wanted it to be in the afternoon. So we were really, really picky because, you know, we have you guys know we have a vlog and we like to do things on schedule because, you know, we got a camera guy that's got to do all this. We have plan ahead, right? So we wanted to do the skydive at a certain time on a certain day. So we were calling for like three or four days straight trying to get an in for that for that yeah. slot. But they were full and then it got delayed by winds and fires and things like that. So we weren't able to get it. But they were just like, all right, screw it. This is out of our control. Let's skip skydiving this episode for the vlog. Let's do a next vlog or the following one and do something else instead. Let's go, you know, we went shooting and uh, we went golfing. golfing yeah. Right. So that was kind of our way, our way to adapt. We, we, were, we like our control to the point where we're going to try every single thing to have it be our way, right? And in that moment, it was completely out of control. We couldn't have it in that moment. So guess what? We adapted and we did something else. Even though we were super stubborn and still pushing every day to go skydiving on that day, guess what? We let it go and, you know, everything worked out fine. It yeah. probably even worked out better. I, I, th I think we could also use an example. Actually, no. I'm, I'm going to save this example for a gr the growth mindset, which mm -hmm. is going to be the third part of this. Because I, I yeah, really love this example. Anyway, so comfort zone, correct? The next thing after letting go of control, you have to self-trust. How, how can you go into the unknown? How can you get outside of this comfort zone if you don't trust yourself, correct? And doing exactly that is going to develop self-trust. And that's going to be a key for developing this confidence in any kind of like, you know, situation. Because... Having confidence and trusting yourself, like, it's not going to be given to you on a platter. Like, a lot of people are like, you know, oh, I'm looking for the one or I'm going to do this if the time is right. Time, timing is never going to be right. You just got to go do the damn thing. Jump self into the unknown. Right. And self-trust is something that you don't just, you don't, you're not born with self-trust. You know, it's something that you learn. You could look at self-trust like progressing in the gym. Let's say you're squatting. You know, first, you don't squat like 225 right away, correct? Yeah. Same way you don't self-trust yourself right away. You have to build that self-trust. And as days go on, as time progresses, you get better at trusting yourself. So like, comparing it to the gym, where your first squat is probably going to be just the bar. So you get the movement down. You kind of get a feel for it. And then once you get the feel for it, you know, you start adding on weight. Because you trust your body more. You trust your, your legs more, your muscles more, that you're going to lift that weight up. Right? Because Hell imagine yeah. if you straight committed to doing 225, you'd break your spine. Right? So that's how self-trust is. It's, it happens over time. You're not... Going, going to be fully confident in yourself and self-trusting right off the bat. The more times you do something, the better you get at it. And that's kind of how, how self-trust goes as well. Yeah, and, and it builds confidence because let's just say everything is pulled underneath your rug, right? Or underneath your feet. You tell yourself, because you have self-trust, I will be okay. I understand the circumstances, but I trust myself that, that I will be able to deal with this. Mm. And that's the mantra that everyone should have, you know? Do you know what a mantra is? Like just a repetitive Repetition. thought. Maybe you wake up in the morning and say, I can handle the unknown. I can handle failures and setbacks. I trust myself. And eventually, you keep telling yourself this, it's going to get plugged into your damn brain and you're going to believe it. That's what, it, that's what a mantra technically is. But the double-edged sword here, what I have with mantras is you can, you can tell yourself thoughts, positive thoughts, but you also have to be a doer. Mm. So you can't say, I'm going to handle this situation, but then have no action towards it. So action is greater over any, anything. Yeah, so I'm going to go beautifully to the next one, just real quick. And just like you said, there's, without action, there really is, is nothing. Yes. Right? Because imagine how many people have these great ideas and they don't do anything about them and no one knows about these great ideas. Like, how are you going to share your ideas with the world if you don't tell somebody or do something? Yeah. Right? So the key to, the key to self-trust and the key to, you know, success and happiness and all, and all that is basically action connected with, with your, basically, mindset. Yes. You know, without mindset, without any, without mindset, you can't have action. But then, without action, you can't have mindset either. 
right? Yeah. That's where it goes into, into yang, growth man, mindset. Right? You can't have one without the other because your your actions come from your thoughts. Yes. But your thoughts are meaningless without those actions. You know how there's like that saying, are your actions worth more than your words? Yeah. I'm a pretty big believer that your actions are for sure greater than, than your words. Because, yeah, your thoughts are just a bunch of dead dreams if you think yeah. about it. But the thing is, yeah, but the thing is you need to have good thoughts too. So it's just like, like Matt said, it's double-edged short. So you got you to gotta have both. It's not just like you could be this, this great you know, a thinker, this theorist or whatever, but if you can't do shit with that, then what's the point? Right. You're unseen. As long as you don't have a fixed mindset and that's where you're not open-minded, you kind of like just stick to your own story. This is the way life is and one should go about it in this way. You're not willing to gain that perspective. Mm -hmm. So if you're stuck in that way, well, you're never going to have that growth mindset. You're, stuck, you're always going to be thinking small. Mm -hmm. So you got to un, you got to un-F yourself from that first before you can start pushing boundaries and getting outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, so like mindset creates action and then action grows the mindset. So that's yes. where you get that growth mindset from. Because then you're, then you're working on both muscles, you could say, yes. right? Because if you have a goal of accomplishing one thing, and guess what, you took action, you accomplished that goal. What's next? Now you gotta think of another goal. Yeah. And just back and forth, back and forth. And, it, and it's all nicely like in tune. But the thing is, it's really hard to be in tune. That's why it's important to, you know, create self-trust, create this confidence, enter into a, a world of consistent change. And this is what I was kind of waiting to talk about, correct? And we're, we are going to use it. We're going to be an example, right? We learned how to build this podcast. We learned how to build this business. We learned everything that we're doing. We went to nursing school and we did four years of science, anatomy, and stuff like that. We didn't learn how to, you know, do software, do audio, edit audio, how to edit videos. We didn't learn any of that. That was all self-taught. And that's where we had that. We had that growth mindset that, hey, even though this is difficult, correct? We are getting outside of our comfort zone, trying new things. We have self-trust that even though shit doesn't go good, we will somehow learn and figure it out. And that's what running a business has been the whole time. It's just, it's just like nursing. Stuff doesn't go the way it goes. There's problems, and we just become problem solvers. Mm. And once you learn how to have a, be a problem solver and have this growth mindset that, hey, I'm learning, and the more I'm learning, the more I'm achieving, and the more I'm going to learn, the world is yours. You can do whatever you want with it, to be honest. That's the way I feel. And all this literally started from a thought that we had, an idea that we had, because we were working three days a week, three nights a week, and we're like, damn, we should probably try to do something else on our off days, right? So we had that thought of, you know, let's try to do something on our off days, which this all stemmed from basically a blog. Yes. You know, so we blogged like, what, like three years ago? That's where it started from. And then we moved on to, you know, different websites, hopped different websites, and then we said, hey, what else can we do? We got this, this blog going, what can we do next? I kind of like talking. You think people are gonna wanna hear our opinions? Fuck, let's try it. Let's so we tried a, try. a podcast, you know, and then guess what? For this podcast, you know, people latched on, you know, we like, we enjoy doing it. Then we're like, now we, had, now we got the podcast stabilized. What's next? Well, we're doing travel nursing. Why do to do a travel nursing vlog? Yep. And just like, that's how where these things stem to. But that's just beautiful to say where this all started from was what? The mindset, right? Self-trust. Yes. Hey, let's do it. Let's get it done. And then after the mindset, the idea took action. And guess what? The mindset occurred, the action happened, and then we reverted back to the mindset. Yep. What's next? You know, and we keep going back and forth, back and forth. So we're constantly always going to be doing shit. Yeah, let, now we're talking about doing investments and shit like that. This is insane. Right. It's the way we're making it sound like it's very binary. It's either, either zero or one, just like a computer is a computer software program. But it really does come down to that. I feel like a lot of people overthink a lot of things. And that thought, those excessive thoughts from overthinking literally halt you, paralyzes you from actually wanting to do things that you want in life. So get out of your damn head. And the way I like, the way we get out of our head is working out. You, you know that it grounds you. Even like combat sports, I, I like the whole jiu-jitsu boxing thing. As soon as you get out of your damn head, figure out what you want to do and just get after it. And that, dude, like, maybe we're just dudes, but physical activity, like, you, you see a person go into the gym, like, you see him lifting weights, you see him pushing his weight, you see him moaning, groaning, you, you hear him, but you don't see what's going on in their head. Yes. Like, how many times were you laying bought a bench and you lift the bench up and you're just like, damn, this is fucking heavy. This is gonna be hard going down. And you do it, you're just like, damn, what do you, what do you say next? I'm gonna do this, yeah. let's get it, let's lift, you know? Right. And the fact that even if you're scared, let's just say you're just like, fuck, this is heavy, I don't know if I'm gonna get it, and you just do it. You're already showing yourself mentally, hey, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this, and guess what? It's, it's occurring, even though I have this this thought of not, not doing it, and I don't wanna do it because it's heavy and it hurts, and I did it, guess what? That already changes your wiring in your, in your brain. It yeah. shows that, hey, just because mentally you think you can't do it, Guess what? Physically, you're able to. And that goes into the whole David Goggins thing, correct? So David Goggins talks about the governor, how we are, I don't know how many percent we operate, 
at our brain capacity. But any, any single time you go do something or you go run or you're running, you're like two miles in, the governor says, okay, you did a good job. This is enough. Okay, like the brain, your brain is trying to protect itself from not doing too much. And if when you say, hey, I'm gonna run five miles, I'm gonna keep on going, I don't care how I feel, I'm gonna finish this. The governor is like, whoa, this guy is serious. He's not gonna give up. And then you just keep developing new capacities of how much you could push yourself, right? Just like, you know, self-analyzing your strength, your cardiovascular capacity. Damn, now I could run this much. Mm -hmm. It's all about just stretching out that freaking growth mindset muscle in a way. And when you, once you stretch that muscle, you have those new capabilities. Mm -hmm. But you're not gonna have new capabilities unless you go do it and go try it. So guys, it's not, it's not given to you on a platter. You, you have to go out there and get it. Just like confidence, self-esteem. If you wanna go travel nurse, yes, you gotta take that leap of faith and you know get outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, beautiful, I think we should end it right there, man. Yeah, and, and before we end it, I just wanted to say that we're continuously creating new content. I hope you guys appreciate it. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We're trying to grow the vlog. We are going to start live streaming again. We're figuring out the audio. Patreon is being done as time is flying by. We're going to get it done maybe in the next two, two three weeks because we said a month last yeah. time. So we're going to stick to it. It's getting done. There's going to be some cool bloopers there and edits from the vlog. Thank you guys for listening. And if you're list and if you're curious about travel nursing, reach out to us. We have awesome recruiters. We are partnered up with True Staff. If you guys end up working with them, we'll throw you guys a little cup of nurses gift. So if you're interested, there's gonna be a link in the bio on how to reach out to a recruiter. And if you have any questions about any of that, reach out to us. Peter and I are more than happy to chat with you guys. Just like yesterday, we helped mm. somebody answer two of their ch test questions for extra credit. So we are there uh, for you. It would be good if we would have talked about them an episode. Maybe next one. Maybe we'll do one on the news. Next one, Thank yeah. You. We'll talk about it. Take care, guys. Peace out. Have an amazing week and see you guys in a few days. Peace.